Okay, next in our trig section, we're going to be discussing coterminal and reference angles and um, using the trig functions to help find um, different values of angles in standard position. So with that, let's review a little vocabulary. So double checking um, from geometry and again because we have um, different backgrounds and different geometry classes that we came from, we all want to be on the same page. So look at um, the vocabulary here going through the list and see if there's something you don't um, recognize or we didn't want to go over because we'll definitely be hitting a few of these when we talk about um, problems today. So the angle of rotation, um, positive or um, it could be positive or negative, but position of the rotated angle. So when we say angle of rotation, we're talking about where is it at. And um, you know, we're always assuming we have our x, y axis like such. And so the initial side is the one that's laid out and usually this edge is referred to as the initial side and the terminal side is the final position. So if there was something in here marking, hey, this was the way this um, angle was being measured, then um, yes, this would be the bottom here would be the initial side and the top, so to speak, would be the terminal side where it ends. Okay. Um, in standard position, when the initial side lies on the positive x-axis and its end point is at the origin. So if you think about your protractor and how we lay that protractor out, we always set it here and um, had the 0, 1, 2, 3 over this way, so we were considering that like your 0. So now when we set an angle on top of that, this is the initial side and wherever we swing that, there is the terminal side. Okay. So that's considered standard position. Positive measure when the rotation is counterclockwise, like the ones I've drawn, and then when the rotation is clockwise, it's um, negative. So if I rotated from here to here, I would have rotated a negative 90. Okay, not a good choice of color there, but coterminal. Angles in standard position with the same terminal sides. That is definitely one we're going to hit, but Again, ask yourself, you know, if we drew, for example, a 30-degree um, angle here, and we ask, there's the initial side, here's the terminal side where it ends. So um, if it's coterminal, angles in standard position with the same terminal side. So it doesn't matter what we start with. If I started here and I went around and I ended here, now I would have 100 or 360 plus 30 more, so 390. 390 would be a coterminal angle with 30. Um, the last one there, your reference angle, the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side of theta and the nearest part of the x-axis. That's the key on this one. Make sure you're always looking in relationship to the x-axis. So let's start on this one with our angle, and let's say it's uh, 65. And so if I have a 65 degree angle going from here to here, the reference angle is also 65 because that's closest back to the x-axis. Whereas, for example, um, let's do it in pink. If I start here and I go over here to 120, which we know is 30 degrees into this second quadrant. If I did 90 plus 30, that'd give me 120. But now the reference angle is this piece that takes me closest to the x-axis, and that would be the 60 degree. So the reference angle in this case would be the 60 degree. So that's what we're talking about when we say angles. Now, if we use those, we're going to see a few other things happening. Um, and check again, this is something you would have learned, that we know that we have sine, cosine, um, tangent, cosecant. We started to look at some of those values. All of our trig functions are positive in the first quadrant. In the second quadrant, we only have the sine and the cosecant because those are related to the y values, and that's where y is positive. Versus down in the third quadrant, we've got tangent and cotangent, which are relating the x and y's. Um, and so, yes, you can have a negative with a negative down there. Um, and that's always a positive. And then cotangent, um, same thing, x and y's, both could be negative. And then over here in the fourth and final quadrant, the cos 
uh, cosine and the secant is when you have, um, because they're related to the x and the radius, the radius distance is always positive, but the x, um, the y value could take us down and make it negative. So if we're landing down here, um, we've got a positive with a negative, and so we're going to have some negative situations. Um, but the only ones that are positive positive are the cosine and the secant. So this is a list for positive values. Okay. Now, if we draw, draw any um, angle theta, um, like so, and you've got the point P, X, it basically drops a perpendicular down to the X axis. And when we do that, we have um, a right triangle drawn. And that right triangle could give us X squared plus Y squared has to equal R squared. And if that's true, then we're finding that R value by doing the opposite of the Pythagorean theorem. So we've got to take the square root of those two other edges. And so that's where we get the value for the R. Um, you can use Pythagorean theorem if that's easy for you and just undo it in its way. Now, in this kind of setup, though, take a look. The sine of theta is equal, knowing where theta is at. The sine of theta is the Y over the R. Okay, As we know, we can say opposite over hypotenuse but um, it's y over r. Then the cosine would be x over r in that setup. And the tangent would be y over x, opposite over adjacent. Cosecant is a reciprocal of the sine. The secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. And the cotangent is the reciprocal of the tangent. So if you know the sine, cosine, tangent, then you're just using reciprocals. Keep in mind, though, that uh, we have several of them there. When we have an x or y in the denominator, remember that x or y value cannot be 0. Otherwise, we'd have uh, a problem. So going with our vocabulary and some of the trig functions we now understand, here's a real-life situation. Um, talks about something that does go through several rotations. The propeller of an air ex experimental aircraft rotates 900 times per minute. That's a lot. Find the number of degrees through which a point on the propeller rotates in one second. So obviously you're thinking, well, I need to do a little conversion. So start with the idea 9 times per minute was the rotation. And then find the number of degrees through which the point on the propeller rotates. Well, degrees, um, 360 is your whole circle. So that's what we're thinking there. Um, and that it rotates in one minute was the combination. So 360 degrees, 60 seconds, one minute. Okay, so. I have lots of little canceling going on. Minute with minute, the 60 seconds and the 360, there's a 6 up there. So we're left with that 900 times, once we do the canceling, um, times the 6. So we get 5,400 degrees through which this propeller rotates in um, one second. Lot several full rotations. Next, if we look at um, that definition for coterminal angle, we can be anywhere between 360 to negative 360, so one full circle positive, one full circle negative is what our choices are, and if it's a coterminal. So brain, you're saying, hey, that would be nothing, whoa, nothing more than um, a 90 degree angle. Okay, so you're thinking I'm right here. So how can I get something to land in that same spot? And if you start here, we could go in the opposite direction and land there. So that would be a negative 270. So that's what we're talking about. Find a coterminal. Um, you can't just keep spinning and spinning because we do have these restrictions. Okay. If we're at negative 210, let's reset it. If we're at negative 210, here's 90. 180, negative 210 is going to be over in here, 180 plus 30 more. So we're going to be at starting here, rotating in this direction. Okay. And so as I said, we know this is a 30 degree piece. And so all we need is something that gets us to that same spot. Well, if we rotated in the positive direction, what would get us there? Well, our 90 plus that 60 would be 150, and we'd have a coterminal of 150, still within the range that they gave us. Okay. 
Um, there's lots of them if they open up that range a little more, but in some cases you only have a few when they don't, when it's restricted like this. So as long as it ends on the same um, as the terminal side, you're fine no matter which way you're spinning. Uh, find the reference angle for each theta. So right away you're thinking, okay, always ha always have to have a representation of where we're at on our axis. So I always like to put that here. But if I'm at 212, we know 180, and then we get 20 more plus 32 more. So we're in here 32 degrees, and we're at a full rotation of 212. Okay, so you got to be able to picture that. How far are you off of it? And so now it says find the reference angle. Remember we said reference angle is the quickest way to get back to the x-axis. So in this case, that reference angle should be 32 degrees. Okay, let's check it. And it is. Now if we go negative 340, we know in a negative 340 situation, we're going all the way around, whoops, with the exception of, counterclockwise, with the exception of, we're not hitting the last 20 degrees. So we know this is 20, so we know that our reference angle in this case is, quickest way to the x-axis, 20 degrees. Check that. There it is. Okay, the first one's back up again. All right, so try the next one. It's a 40 degree angle. Definitely should be 40 by itself. And then last one, we're at 124. So we got 124. We get 124, we're taking our 90 plus 10 more to get to us 100. So it's a 34 degree wedge that we're looking at here. So we started here, went 34 degrees more into it. 90 plus 34 is 124. But now ask yourself what's left, because that's the quickest way back to that axis. And it should be 56. So check it. And there you go. Reference angle, quickest way back to the x-axis from your landing position. All right, last but not least, I believe, oh, almost. Um, let P be the point negative 1, 3 on the terminal side of theta. Find the exact values of each of these. So right away you're thinking, okay, we need to do a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So if we do that, um, negative 1, negative 1 squared, plus 3 squared has to equal r squared. So we get 1 plus 9 equals r squared. So 10 equals r squared. So r is really the square root of 10. So knowing that, we can go right to our formulas, hopefully. Remember, sine is the y value. So that would be 3 over r. Our radius is radical 10. You'd want to um, rationalize that. So fill in this list and see what you get. We know the um, cosecant is a reciprocal of that. So once we find our answer here, we can just reciprocal it. The cosine we should know is x over r. So that's negative 1 over the square root of 10. But again, rationalize that. And then we would flip it to get the secant. The tangent we should know is y over x. The y value is the 3. And our x is that negative 1. Flip it should give us the cotangent. That's what we're looking at today. Same thing would happen on this slide. I've done the other way uh, with the to get the y. So try this one on your own, knowing that the cosine is 5 thirteenths, and we can talk about it in class and see if there's any issues with those shortcuts for x and y.